Welcome back to another Ohm Lab tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about automating parameters on auxiliary tracks. And we're probably going to be revisiting automation in general um, in the coming days because we've definitely had an increase in questions about automation in general. Um, and they're, they're different enough, each one of these questions are different enough that we feel it's probably worth breaking each one of these into its own lesson. That way if you already know the answers, you don't have to tune in. No need to waste your time. All right, so uh, again, today we're talking about auxiliary tracks and how to automate parameters. Okay, and we're, we're just going to run through a very quick scenario here um, that a lot of you will probably find yourself in at some point, and we're going to show you how to get through it. All right, so without further ado, uh, here's the sound we've selected for today. It's a patch called Colossal, preset for Native Instruments Massive Synth. It's an, it can be found in an upcoming release. It'll be announced soon. Um, and as you can hear, it's a fairly cinematic sound. It, it's got a really nice, you know, long decay or release on there. And what we want to do is fill this out so it's truly cinematic. You know, it builds in this atmospheric, like, kind of uh, immersive quality to it. All right, so uh, let's set that up. First thing we'll need to do is uh, send this audio to a bus. All right, we'll just go ahead and we'll send that at full strength. And we're just going to go ahead and solo this auxiliary track here. And let's put some reverb on it. And bring this down here. Let's do something big. And a hall, for sure, a hall. And let's grab a really long, maybe this conservatory will do. Let's see what this sounds like. Again, we are listening to just the auxiliary track here. So it's important that we have no dry signal involved, only wet. And that actually sounds pretty nice. So um, we're just going to tweak this here to our liking just a bit more and see if we can get this done in just a matter of seconds here for us. All right, let's listen to that again. That's pretty nice, actually. All right, so uh, let's roll with that. And uh, after the uh, reverb, let's just go ahead and toss on an EQ just to make sure that we are not uh, flooding our project with unnecessary frequencies here. All right, that should probably be good enough. Um, and then what we'll do is, because that reverb, you know, that reverb is probably going to be pretty consistent um, because you don't want to start messing with that kind of uh, audio tail that's so fragile, right? It's going to be very noticeable. Um, but, you know, this is uh, one of those scenarios where you have the opportunity to affect an audio tail, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that, that rings out that long and that true. Um, and you can do some really unique things with that. So uh, let's just toss on a simple uh, distortion of some kind. A phase distortion? No, actually, you know what? Let's do a let's do a bit crusher. Uh, we'll keep it kind of simple here, and you can see that the parameters here are just very basic uh, bit crusher parameters. Um, now let's move this up to 16-bit re resolution, so there's no. Um, there's no drop off in quality or anything. So when we listen to this right now, we turn this off. Okay, so as you can hear, really the only thing uh, having any effect on the sound at this point is the drive parameter. So it's increasing the overall perceived loudness of the signal itself. Okay. Uh, and then down here in the advanced settings, uh, you can find that uh, by clicking on this little disclosure triangle here, uh, there's a mix parameter. Okay. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to kind of mangle this a little bit, but only after the original sound has. Uh, completed playing through and I would like to make it a nice smooth transition uh, so it kind of sounds like there's some kind of noisy glitchy something happening there at the very end um, 
Let's see if we can accomplish that. Now, of course, this is going to require automation because we can't sit here and manipulate all of these parameters uh, while the rest of our project is playing through. Just imagine that we have a really big project here. All right. Um, and to make it really funny, just imagine that we're scoring a film right now. All right. So uh, we go into um, our automation mode. And as you can see, there is no, um, there's no auxiliary track here. So how in the world are we going to automate it? Well, uh, we just come down here and right click on our auxiliary track. We can also do it right here. Okay. And we're just going to say create track. So now all of a sudden we have the ability to automate parameters. And before we jump into that, I just want to show you something very cool. Um, a lot of people, uh, complain about how it's really difficult to manage the mixer view of large projects in Logic Pro because you can't actually move around your um, auxiliary tracks. You can move around your um, regular tracks, but you can't move around those auxiliary channels. But actually you can, and you do it the same way that you move around your other tracks, okay? And that's up here in your arrangement window. So as you can see, auxiliary one is now ahead of the Colossal patch. If we drag that back down in our project, you're going to see that now Colossal's ahead of auxiliary one. So uh, easy answer here is to simply uh, add an auxiliary track to your arrangement window and then place it where you want it in the mix. And you know what? If you don't want it to stay up there in the arrangement window, it's as simple as hit and delete. Okay. It's, it's just as simple as that. Okay, but uh, for this example, we are going to keep it up there and we'll go ahead and we'll disclose our automation features again and uh, go into our bit crusher here. And there are going to be two things that we want to automate, remember. Uh, one of them is the resolution. We wanted to uh, make a, a change. Okay, and we're starting at 16 bit and we're going to change. Uh, I guess I really don't need a second one here. Um, probably right around the end of the actual uh, MIDI note, which you can see here goes through four full bars. So somewhere around here, uh, we're going to drop this and let's drop it uh, significantly, um, but not so it's completely destructive of the sound. Okay, so let's listen to this. Okay, so it's a cool effect, but obviously there's a big jump um, there, which is why we now uh, will want to come in here back to our Bit Crusher and choose the Mix option. And now we're just going to uh, set up a, a, a quick modulation of Mix. Okay, so we'll just bring this down at, I guess, around... Looks pretty good. Uh, you don't want it to go completely dark and you want it to come up with a little bit of uh, time left in our region. It looked like our sound uh, pretty much cut off right before the end of our full seven bars here. So that should give us a little bit of window in time to appreciate the difference here. Let's see what it sounds like. All right, so I'm not too thoroughly impressed. Um, so we're actually going to uh, change the automation curve just a little bit so it sounds a bit more natural. Drag this back, put this out here. Now let's uh, unsolo the auxiliary track so we can now hear it in context with the original sound plane as well. Okay, that way we can tell how good that mix really is. All right, here we go. All right, so that was all right. We're just gonna drag this out just a little bit more here, I think. So it's a little bit more natural, but uh, this is exactly how you go about automating parameters on auxiliary tracks.
All right, so that's actually pretty nice. Uh, I think towards the very end here, um, I wanna deconstruct that sound just a little bit more, make the curve just a tiny bit smoother, maybe bring out just a little bit more uh, drive from that bit crusher unit. Um, and this is gonna sit really nicely in a film somewhere. Um, so again, uh, let's just run through those steps. We, uh, we take our original sound um, and we send that to, uh, to a bus. Okay, and then on that, on that auxiliary channel, what we do is we uh, load up our effects and then we uh, simply right click on the auxiliary channel header and click create track. That adds it to our arrangement window. And then we can go ahead and start automating on that track just like we would any other track in our project. And remember, while it's here, while it's here in the arrangement window, uh, you can uh, change the position of that track in your mixer view. Okay, so that's a really, really handy pro tip to help keep your projects um, organized and, and orderly in a way that really makes sense to you. All right, uh, we hope that this uh, made some sense. We hope it answered some questions for you and we hope that you can put it to use in your very next project. Thanks for tuning in as always and we will see you again soon. Cheers.